In these problems, we're using something called the quotient rule of exponents. And that's a, a pretty fancy name for something that is not really too hard. All you really have to do with the quotient rule is subtract. So let me show you how this works. Remember, when you have two um, things with the same base and different exponents that you're multiplying together, so if we wanted to multiply x squared times x to the fourth, you add the exponents. So when you multiply, you add the exponents. And this would just be x to the sixth. If you're dividing, let's say you have x to the fourth divided by x squared, you do the opposite. You subtract. So this really is 4 minus 2, which equals 2. So that is x squared. And this is the quotient rule. You just subtract the exponents if you're dividing. Remember, the bases always have to be the same. I've got x and x for my bases. If you're dividing, you just subtract the exponents. So let's see how that works. In this problem, we've got a fraction here, but this is really division. You can think of this problem as x to the negative eighth divided by x to the negative ninth. And just like in this one, we're going to subtract. So really, our problem is negative eight minus a negative nine. It's a little confusing because of the signs here, but we can do this. So we've got negative 8 minus a negative 9th. Well, two negative signs in a row is like a plus sign. If you subtract a negative, you're actually adding it. So negative 8 plus 9, that's going to be a positive 1. So our answer here is going to be x to the 1 power. Well, and we don't even write the 1. We just leave it as it is. So the answer to this is just x. So we subtracted the exponents, and we just got x to the first power, or x. Let's try a much more complicated one. So in this beast, we have um, all these things multiplied on the top, x terms and y terms and z terms and same on the bottom. I think I'm going to do a little simplification first. I know that x to the fifth times x to the third, I can just add those exponents together. So x to the fifth times x to the third, that's really x to the eighth. And that's a way I can simplify it. I can't do anything with the y up here. That's just y. There's no exponent. I think I'm going to write in a 1 because uh, this will help me remember that this is to the first power. And then I've got z to the negative fourth. OK, so that's the top. I'm going to see if I can simplify anything on the bottom. Let's see, I've got z to the negative 2 and z to the negative 1. And remember, you're adding exponents when you multiply. So this is z to the negative third down there. And then I've got my y to the negative fourth. Now we can do our division, where we do the, the quotient rule. Uh, so far, I've just done the multiplication on the top and on the bottom. Now we're going to do our division. We're going to do this one variable at a time. And so I want to think of this as three separate problems. The first part of it is the x term. I, I have x to the eighth on top. I don't have any x's on the bottom. So it's like I'm subtracting nothing, which just leaves this exactly the way it is. So that first part is just going to be x to the eighth still. And then my next term is the y terms. And I've got y to the first on the top and y to the negative fourth on the bottom. So I'm going to apply my quotient rule. I'm going to subtract the exponents. So this is 1 minus a negative 4. 1 minus a negative 4 is the same as 1 plus 4. So that's 5. So what I get on the top then is y to the fifth. Now let's do the z's. I have an, an z to the negative 4 and z to the negative 3. So this becomes negative 4 minus a negative 3. And of course, minus a negative 3 is the same as plus 3. So negative 4 plus 3, that's a negative 1. So what I get on the top here is z to the negative 1. And that is my answer. So that's a little bit of work with the quotient rule. Remember, when you divide, you subtract the exponents.